Picking the right solar panel for your system is critical to the generation, lifespan and reliability of the system, as well as ultimately the financial success of the project. If you pick a panel that's too expensive, then you're going to be missing out on some potential returns. But if you pick a panel with too high a cell degradation, for example, then maybe the reliability of the panel drops off as time goes on. In this video, we're going to take a look at what to look for in a solar panel. We're going to compare five of the industry's top selling solar panels for this year. And we're also going to go on site and look at some panels on a roof. We're going to answer the question as to which solar panel is best for your house, all in this one video. But if you don't want to watch the whole thing, then you can skip through using the chapters in the video description. So firstly, we're going to talk about what to look for in a solar panel. And there are a couple of key features that you should look out for when choosing a panel. I'm going to run through these features now and also talk about what the industry standards currently are for each feature. So the first key feature is power output. Now the current standard power output for residential solar panels is between 420 watt peak and 460 watt peak. You'll notice that I've used the phrase watt peak, W P. That's the peak power output that the panel will output in lab conditions. Now this is rare in the UK, but if you have a south facing system without any shading, you may see your panels outputting their kilowatt peak on sunny days. Another thing to look out for is the silicon structure. Now you're looking for a monocrystalline silicon solar cell. The alternative to monocrystalline is polycrystalline. However, these started to be phased out in 2019, so you most likely won't come across them anymore. Monocrystalline just means that it's a single crystal structure, and that's more efficient than polycrystalline. Now, something else that you may want to look for is an all black panel. Now, there's not really a technical benefit to this, but they do look better. Another key feature to look out for is the module's module efficiency. Now, module efficiency gives a percentage for power output per meter squared. For example, if 1000 watts of light hit the panel in the lab conditions and 220 watts are output from the panel, that means it has a module efficiency of 22%. It's important to note that efficiency is done in terms of the module, not the cell. It's looking at power output per meter squared. It's not the same as cell efficiency. Now, the industry standard at the moment has panel efficiency between 21.5% and 25%. You probably want to avoid a panel that's less than 21.5% efficient. The next industry standard feature that comes with a modern panel is an N-type semiconductor. Now, N-type or negative type semiconductors are created by doping a pure semiconductor, in this case silicon, with an impurity, which in the case of solar panels is phosphorus. Now the impurity donates extra electrons to the silicon, hence the N for negative. The alternative to N-type is P-type, which is when the silicon is coated in boron. In this case, there are fewer electrons and the P in P-type stands for positive. Now P-types can suffer from something called the boron oxygen defect and N-type panels are more resistant to the light-induced degradation that you get with solar panels. So basically, N-type panels have better cell degradation and therefore better performance warranties. This brings me nicely onto solar panel warranties. Now you typically get two types of warranty for a solar panel. You get a power output and a product warranty. The power output warranty is often called a performance warranty, and it basically guarantees that after a certain period of time, usually 25 years, you'll still get a certain power output relative to the original output that the panel achieved in a standard test condition. As I mentioned earlier, these standard test conditions are roughly equivalent to the ideal weather in the UK. The product warranty guarantees that if there's a defect in the first 25 or 30 years, such as a failed bypass diode, for example, the panel manufacturer will reimburse the cost of the panel or they'll provide a replacement. The final key feature that you want to look at is cell degradation. There are a few things that contribute to the cell degradation in a solar panel, the main one being aging. Over the years of a panel being in, on the roof, it's exposed to a lot of light-induced degradation. There's just general weather factors and environmental factors that also take a toll on the panel. 
Micro cracks can develop in the silicon solar cells and the electrical connections can also deteriorate. There are a few other factors such as thermal cycling and delamination that will also contribute to the general degradation of the panel. Ideally, when you're looking at a panel's data sheet, you want to see that it will have retained a minimum of 85% of the power output after 25 or 30 years. This is also tied into the performance warranty. One thing that a few manufacturers are leaning into more is a bifacial solar panel. You'll notice that this one behind me has been turned around and that there are also cells on the back. This is starting to become more common with modern panels. Basically, the cells on the back allow the panel to capture any light that's bouncing around the back of the panel. Now, for most on systems, this is definitely a bit of a gimmick. There's not going to be a notable increase in generation as a result of the cells on the back because the panels are so tight to the roof that barely any light will get under the panel to then bounce back into it. Bifacial panels will, however, make more of a difference for ground-mounted systems as well as flat roof systems. This is because the panels are pitched at 15 degrees and installed in rows. So in this case, one row of panel will then reflect light onto the back of another row of panels, as you can see on the diagram in the screen now. Bifacial panels are said to be able to increase panel output by up to 30%, but I'd take that with a pinch of salt. As I said, I don't think it'll make any difference for standard on-roof panels. It may be more helpful for a ground-mounted system where a significant amount of light is actually reflected onto the panel. We're now going to take a look at some of the best-selling panels in the UK, as well as the companies that manufacture them. We're going to compare each panel using the table behind me. And as you can see, we're going to compare the cost per watt the efficiency of the panel, the cell degradation, the performance warranty associated with the cell degradation, the product warranty, how many years the manufacturers had in the industry, as well as where the manufacturer is based. Hopefully from this, you'll be able to get a good idea of which panel is best for you. To start with, we're going to be looking at an all black panel from Trina Solar. Now, Trina is one of the largest solar panel companies in the world. They're actually headquartered in China, and that's where most of their manufacturing is done as well. The Trina panel that we're going to look at is the 445 watt. Now, this is the cheapest panel, so it's going to go first on our table. And when we come to looking at other panels, we'll use the Trina price as a benchmark. So, for example, you can see that this ICO is 15% more expensive than the Trina 445 watt. This panel is 22.3% efficient. That means that 22.3% of the light that is hitting the panel will be output in optimal conditions. Trina's performance warranty says that it will have retained an 87.4% peak generation capacity after 30 years. However, it only comes with a 15-year product warranty. Trina's been in the industry since 1997, which makes them one of the most experienced panel manufacturers on this list. The next panel we're gonna look at is from a brand called JA Solar. They're another huge manufacturer and they're also based in China and they've been around since 2005. The panel that we're gonna look at is the JA 440 watt and it's actually bifacial. As I spoke about earlier, bifacial panels have cells on the underside of the panel as well as the front face. The performance warranty for this panel is the same as Trina and they say that it will have retained an 87.4% peak generation capacity after 30 years. However, compared to Trina, the product warranty for this panel is 25 years instead of 15. The JA445 is 8% more expensive than the baseline Trina panel and they're the same efficiency. So I think the reason for that additional 8% is because they give you a 10 years longer warranty. The next panel is from Ico Solar. They've been around for 15 years since 2009 and they're also headquartered in Shanghai in China. In 2022, they came out with the ABC line of panels which were a whopping 23.1% efficient. In terms of efficiency, they're by far the market leaders. This panel behind me is an Ico 455 watt Neo Star 2, which is also 23.1% efficient. It has a performance warranty, which states it will have retained 88.85% peak generation capacity after 30 years. And the product warranty for this panel is 25 years. When it comes to price, the Neo Star 2 is only 15% more than our benchmark Trina panel. However, you do get a 25 year warranty, you get a phenomenal efficiency and you also get a really great cell, cell degradation.
The next headliner panel that we're going to look at is from a brand called REC or REC. They were founded in 1996 in Norway and they have a factory in Singapore which produces all their panels. They are still headquartered in Norway though. REC have a reputation for quality and the brand themselves focuses on being very sustainable and transparent. If you're a REC certified installer, you'll be able to offer a 25 year product warranty. However, if you don't go with a certified installer, then they'll only be able to offer you a 20 year warranty. This panel behind me is a 430 watt all black panel and the price is 60% more than the baseline Trina. The panels are 22.3% efficient, which is very good. However, when it comes to their cell degradation, they'll only warranty it for 25 years compared to 30 years that the others are warranting for. However, they do state that it will have retained 92% power capacity after those 25 years. The final panel that we're going to look at is the SunPower Maxion 430 watt. Now, you may have heard of SunPower, and they're highly regarded as being the most premium and highest quality panel manufacturer on the market. They're an American firm, and they've been developing panels for over 35 years. This SunPower panel behind me is a SunPower Maxion 6, which actually has an N-phase microinverter built into it. However, for the purposes of this comparison, we're going to be looking at the SunPower 430 watt panel in the Maxion 3 series. It does look the same as this panel, but we just didn't have one in the warehouse at the time of this video. Now, a big selling point that SunPower have is that they offer a 40 year warranty for any panels that are installed by a registered SunPower installer such as ourselves. Their warranty information states that the panel will degrade at a maximum of 0.25% per year from year two to year 40. In the first year, they say it will degrade up to 2%. Either way, this works out to be a retained peak power output of 90.5% after 40 years, which is phenomenal. Sun power panels do, however, come at a serious premium and a 430 watt Sun Power Maxion 3 will cost 4.5 times as much as the benchmark Trina panel. So in conclusion, which panel do you want on your roof? As you can see with these Chinese panels, you're getting some great value. The REC and Sun Powers are better, but are they really worth the premium price? In my honest opinion, they're not. A couple years ago, there was a big gulf between panel outputs and Sun Power were offering 400 watt panels, whereas their competitors in China were offering 250 watt panels. So the increase in power output was well worth the premium price. But nowadays, that playing field is leveled and they're all around the 430 to 460 watt mark, as you can see. And the main technical benefit to some powers is the whopping 40 year warranty that you get with them. However, is that warranty really worth it? In my four years in this industry, I've only ever seen three solar panels break. One was at a golf club and the other was at a cricket club and there's two guesses what happened there. The next was actually on a ground mounted system where a tree fell over and a branch smashed one of the panels. So in short, solar panels don't really go wrong. You just install the panel on the roof and they work. Last year, our best selling panel was the Trina 415 watt. And I'd say that over 95% of our installations used this panel and they've all been working fine since. You just don't need to pay a premium for this technology anymore. Ultimately, you just want the best price per watt. We're now gonna go over to our managing director's house in Reading where he's got some of those Trina 415 watts and we're gonna have a look at how they're performing and see what they look like a year on. As I said earlier in the video, last year our best selling panel was the Trina 415 watt all black. And you can see 14 of them behind me. This is actually one of our director's houses. And on a day like today, these panels will be generating their kilowatt peak even a year after they've been installed. And I think that just goes to show that you don't need a more expensive panel. Our design team have over 30 years experience and we always recommend these.